Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 10 of It's Just Bodybuilding. I'm your co-host, Ron Partlow, and with me is my partner in crime, Dusty Hanshaw. And we can't wait to do Coach's Corner and listener questions this week on It's Just Bodybuilding. Episode 10. We're in the double digits and they haven't left us yet. No, and the, the last episode with uh, Jordan Peters has the most hits of anything that we've done so far. So we're climbing. Yeah, we're, we're, we're on our way up. And I feel like that one's just, it's, it's just going to gain more traction. And the amount of people who, and I know you're the same, that messaged me, emailed, like all of a sudden the fucking light bulbs went off and they understood what I've been posting about for five fucking years. Uh, apparently, Jordan uh, does a better job at explaining. I think no tears in the Lion King. I never brought the Lion King. In it was place. you know he came across as an especially disturbed individual, and I think that that's what it takes to really hit the message home. You know, <laughs> Matt. You know, Matt, he goes. He goes. When I watched it, he goes. I saw your face when he said the Lion King, and you paused like you were waiting. Yeah. For him to click the joke. And then yeah. He, Oh shit! It's the Lion King. Yeah, he'd moved on already. He was already. He was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was good. I my favorite thing was that I had people tell me that they went straight to the gym and set PRs. Like I had a dozen people message me and tell me they had the best workout either of the year or whatever. You know, people say I had the best workout of the month or best leg workout in two years or whatever they said. Right. But people were like messaging me and going, I just like squatted four plates for the first time or I just got six reps on the hack with four plates or whatever their goal was. Right. Yeah. And and then even my training partner, like we went to train, you know, legs uh, yesterday and we hadn't trained since the show because I was away. Right. And we went to train legs yesterday. And, and you know, I said, hey, it's uh, it's got to be my my birthday leg day. Oh, it's a bullet. I slipped that in, you know, a little happy birthday to me. You know, 44. So I know they're adding up. So it was my birthday leg day. And, and he was like, I could tell it, that episode got him fired up, too, because he, he went for like two extra force reps on everything. So <laughs> oh, geez, I don't want to have to lift these fuckers off of you either. <laughs> yeah. And and then the, the funniest part was even myself. Um, you know, I was scheduled to go away for Mutant on a Mission that week. I was going to shoot two episodes right. and I was going to train legs with one of the gym owners. Right. Um, and uh Anyways, I, you know, just as things went, I uh, wound up I, I wound up doing legs before I left for the trip because I was so fired up, <laughs> and um, yeah, and then you know, and, and then I, you know, I was so sore after I messaged him. I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to do legs again. <laughs> Let's do back. You know, I wasn't wasn't 100 percent after that one, but it, yeah, I was just so fired up to train after the JP episode. You know, it reminded me of, you know, like being younger and like how crazy you are when you first start. And JP just found a way to sort of like harness that and 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 express it you know i even got motivated by it you know when you have a guest on like that um who uh who just gets you fired up to just fucking smash a workout so you know i know you had to train that day too oh yeah no and it, it, it's it's that's what i was saying is like when you were when i was done with that i mean even just talking about it you know how it is it's like when you get together with people and just jam on something that everybody all understands it's kind of like all right I think that your uh, your demons join forces a little bit. I actually started to hear Jordan's voices. <laughs> right, right, right. I was doing stiff legged deadlifts the other day, and I could hear him saying "pull." You know, <laughs> I've never been hurt. I've never been hurt. Pull. He's talking about how he can pull, and that like he can be explosive and and brutal, and and he can do whatever he wants, right? And he'll never get hurt pulling. It's just kind of an. So I just had that in my head, you know. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. And, you know, a lot of people at the gym came up to me and said they really liked that episode. And, um, I mean, I knew you were getting messages because, you know, you said the feedback was so great. So, you know, that's what we want, though, from every guest. You know, when we had Dana on, I got messages that people were super motivated. You know, people loved Ian. People loved Luke. You know, it's uh, we've been really lucky. So I'm um, looking forward to just keeping the, the list of guests rolling. Absolutely. The hardcore freaks. 
Yeah. So you 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 got a few questions. We we're going to do a listener question episode here, and uh, we're going to hit a few topics that um, I mean, the questions that I got the most this week were kind of like you know because of last week's episode. Right. Um. So you know, uh, I, I, maybe we'll hit some of those right off the bat because they're kind of fresh in everyone's memory. Um. So w- one question I got from several people is how much volume do you actually do? You know, because we're talking about, you know, pump training versus high intensity training. And I know there's a lot of semantics in there. I mean, John Meadows has made some really good points about how people just use different words to describe their sets. And then it winds up causing arguments. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're really actually doing the same workout. You know, like I know Meadows um, is a big proponent of, you know, multiple sets of say 10 to 12 reps and then the last set is like all out failure with like the four reps and partials and iso holds and all that stuff um and he and, calls it one set yeah and he'll say you know where he might he might say he did four sets of that exercise but yeah one set was all out yeah um whereas i know myself i always sort of like spoke with the older like the dorian language where i'd say oh i just do i just did one set of leg press yeah where i really did six sets of leg press like and then just walk over to the machine and load it up, right? Yeah. Um, so, and and then also I know you, your warm-up sets are very low rep. Yeah, everything for me, the warm-up is, is just, it's enough to touch the weight and to feel comfortable. So like the lighter weights might be 10, 12 reps. And then by the time I'm doing like my last touch, it's two. Right. You know? Like, okay, because I don't want to go from, you know, 600 pounds to 900. So I'll go from 600 to 750 and touch it for two and then go, okay, now we're going to go to nine. Right, right. So people see that two reps and they don't know what to make of it. I think there's some confusion. Like, not that you put that video up on Instagram, but let's say someone sees you train in the gym. Um, You're not even counting 750 for two. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I even tell my, I tell the guy that does my videos, I'm like, don't bother. Yeah, yeah. Like, this this is literally, I just want to feel 750 because if not, it's one of those things where, ignore my numbers, whatever your numbers are. If you went from 600, like I do to 900, that's going to shock you. It's like, fuck, that's three, that's 300 pounds. Yeah. And your form, you, you, like, you know, that's a huge load change. So you have to have your, your, it's like the rehearsal. You need to practice the actual process of pulling a heavy weight. Yeah, exactly. You got to feel you know. like same thing. Like even on my warmups, um, I don't use a belt or wraps or any, any of the equipment until it's time to work. Right. So I might do one, like uh, like yesterday when we were doing the uh, the hack squats, um, I worked up to 18 plates and then did a drop down set of 16 plates. I didn't put my belt on until my set prior to the 18 plates where I just touched 14. Um, I did two reps with it and I put a belt on just so I could feel what a belt felt like before I pushed. Right, right. And now that's kind of how I used to train. I, my prep, I, I used to use the term prep set. Right. So I'd have warm-up sets, prep set, and then working sets. And the warm-up sets were the bullshit, you know, one plate for 15, two plates for 10. Right. And then like, you know, maybe I'm doing, let's say I was doing incline back in the day, you know, I might do one plate for 15, two plates for 10, two and a half plates for six, and that would be my prep. Right. And then I'd go to like three plates and a 10 pounder and I'd do my work set. Right. Where I'd go to like failure plus two forced reps, plus they'd drop a negative or two on me. Right. You know, and that would be how I would structure my sets. And then if you asked how many I did, I'd say one. Or if I, after maybe after that set, I take the 10 pounders off right. and just do three plates for one more set. And because you took 20 pounds off, you might get the same number of reps, like another six or seven rep set. Right. And you did two hard all out sets, you know. Um, now that I'm older um, and j- trying to, yeah, way older, way, way older. <laughs> and just uh, trying to stay healthier is a priority and considering my training age which is about 60 um <laughs> i uh i i do almost 10 reps on all my warm-ups and preps now right. um i'd say eight to ten on all my sets now so there's a little more energy i guess a younger version of me would consider it wasted energy on the warm-ups right um whereas i sort of think maybe it's not a bad investment to put a couple of rep, a couple, you know, a little bit more gas into the warm ups, get a bit more, you know, I guess, stress that way. 
Um, it, you know, it's going to knock a few pounds off your work sets, but I feel like I'm just, my joints handle it better now at this point. Um, yeah. But the odd, there's still the odd day where I'll get under a weight and I'll I'll crank out three and go fuck this, drop it and go let's throw another plate on you know That's reason yeah you get those those days you know where I I know I know you just have to you just have to be you know you have to be smart about it right so sure. you can imagine me being smart about anything Dusty I mean you've known me for a while this is relative like it's we're not risk. talking about yeah. right <laughs> smart <laughs> bodybuilder he's he's so, it's a relative smart. So uh, another question I had here is, what's the highest amount of volume that you've ever done for like any real extended period of time? Ooh, I actually, uh, when I first started, like 2006 is when I would say I started bodybuilding. Um, I actually worked uh, with JJ Marsh, who was a uh, 90s pro, uh, and we did a lot of volume. Uh, He's his, huge. Yeah, his, his deal was uh, high reps with high weight, with high sets at four in the morning. <laughs> so yeah, everything hard. Deal. Uh, so yeah, it was just it, basically the mentality was more, you know? Right. And I think I, I really, um, I did well with that because it's where I started. Um, but I can definitely tell you, if I were to go back to that now, like if someone said, okay, you're gonna go to high volume now, uh, to that kind of volume, I would have to change my entire mindset because the amount of energy, mental energy it takes for my sets, I can't imagine doing 26 sets for quads or something. Right. Like, I think that I would go brain dead at 12. Yeah. And not really be there anymore. I mean, I just think that if you're, uh, and it's funny because I say this knowing that JJ was one of the most freakish beast trainers there was. But he was wired that way, whereas now I'm wired to put that amount of focus into six sets, you know, yeah, um, yeah. And, and no matter what, you can kind of zero in. I mean, I was I was telling a kid yesterday because he, he asked me after the set, he's like, how do you do that? Like, how do you get locked in? And I'm like, it's one minute. I have to give focus of that level for one minute. Right. It. And you figure if I do, you know, six sets total, it's six minutes, six and a half, seven minutes. You know what I mean? For the spread out, spread out over an hour. Yeah. So it's not that difficult, but doing that 26 times and high reps. And so you're talking about getting to 15, essentially being done and forcing five more reps. That might take another 40 seconds by the right. time you come up to the top, you know. So uh, the highest I would say, though, was I bet you I was doing. 30 sets for legs. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, it was just obscene. Like, I think I'm tapped now. <laughs> right, right. I I worked with uh, with a coach for a while. You know, I did the the Dorian thing all from pretty much, you know, middle of high school all the way till I was, you know, second at nationals and like, you know, 300 off season and all that. So it worked really well for me. And then I did start to run into some like frustrating plateaus. And um, I started working with a coach named Scott Abel who was really famous in Canada here back in the nineties. He turned like pretty much everyone pro here for a while. Um, he was like the coach, you know, he got, he worked with Greg Kovacs and like all like kind of the, the, the famous Canadians that, you know, he helped Paul Dillette back in the day, like, you know, all those guys that he worked with all those guys. And um, uh, so I started working with him and he was a big believer in volume. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, he, he, he thought you should train just to failure and not, past failure because he he really believed that the 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 total stress the total load you know if you take you know 300 pounds times 12 times five sets and you add it up you get that mathematical number of how many pounds you moved right and he really liked those numbers to be big right so you know 10 plates on the leg press for five sets of 15 right you know and like it gets fucking hard like <laughs> it's volume training isn't easy it's just different you know, and, and, and there's a difference between like hardcore, like, you know, volume training and like, you know, pump training, like being a pussy about it. Right. right. But like this hard ass volume training. But when I first started doing his volume training, I didn't know how to do it. I was doing every set. Like I got the program. It's like leg press four sets. So I did four fucking brutal sets yeah. of leg press. <laughs> and then reps with the <laughs> yeah like we're breaking you know, like down in two weeks <laughs> yeah and like within a week or two i was messaged him i'm like i'm like a complete disaster like i think i'm getting the flu 
<laughs> and, <God. laughs> you know, and he's asking me all these questions because I'm here. I am this super hardcore guy that's having problems with the workouts. He's like, he's like, how's this? This guy's supposed to be yeah, tough. How's that possible? <laughs> yeah, like this guy's supposed to be like super hardcore. Like, why is he having problems with the workouts? But and then we finally realized we had like a. Um, sort of a, a perception uh, difference on on what the workout was. And he's like, no, I don't want you doing any forced reps. I, I want you going right to that, like, kiss of failure, you know? Yeah, the moment you can't finish the rep is done. Yeah, and so I started training like that for a while. And I did grow on his program. I did mm -hmm. improve. I, when I worked with Scott, my physique did go up a size. Right. And um, But that also goes back to, you know, the, the hardest workout is sometimes the one that you're not doing. Right, yeah, it's and, a shock. You know, I remember doing, I remember my chest grew. All of a sudden I had like a fuller chest. I was like, oh, it was just total volume, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there was some things that happened that, that I did notice and I learned a ton. But, you know, when it comes down to actually adding muscle to my frame, I, I still wound up going back to, going back to like, you know, from 20 sets of quads to like eight. Right. You know, and and uh, that seems to be where I, I had the most success for like the the last third of my, you know, career. I kind of see my competing years as like three three stages I went through. Right. And I sort of finished the way I started. Right. <laughs> right. I sort of went back like, what really works for me, you know? And I, I I sort of finished out all those shows I did with Chris. Right. I I trained my way, you know. Chris didn't try to get me to train anybody's way. He said, train your way, and and that's when I had the most success and. Um, and it was, you know, I guess eight working sets of quads, right. maybe, maybe 10 on back because I do like lower back as like a separate exercise. And you know what I mean? I, I, I didn't deadlift as much as you do. You know, I wasn't like that type of deadlifter, but, um, you know, chest would be eight sets and then the smaller body parts might be six to eight sets, Right. you know, and that was kind of the, where I had the most success. You know, but I never did the uh, the straight up DC like like you did. I remember you sent me a DC program like a couple of years ago to try, yeah. and I was having fun with it. Like I started it, and I was like, ah, oh, this is the actual DC. I've never done real DC. I thought I want to give this a go. And then like I think it was like a month in, and I blew my quad. Yeah. <laughs> so not like, doing the training, everyone. Not we doing the training. It was uh, unrelated. But yeah, that was a bit unfortunate. <laughs> so. But yeah, people were really uh, st stimulated by the concepts that we went over um, with Jordan. You know, the, the 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 one phrase he uses is pivotal reps. Right. Those pivotal pivotal reps. Right. <laughs> and um, you know, I had more than one person mention it to me. They're like, I think they're like, I think about that now. Right. Well, that's the thing is you got you have to lock into that. Um, you know, I I've posted about it before. Dante calls it the now moment. Yeah. Uh, that's where that first rep that you struggle to finish, that's when the set starts. Yeah, that's now you're into the ones that matter. It's time to go. Like, you know, so I mean, that, you'll oftentimes in the videos, like, I'll tell Matt during, I'm like, okay, now it counts. Yeah, and, and at that point, you're only like one to three reps away from being done the set. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, it's it, and that's the thing. But if, but if you can get that one more rep, you know, every workout or every set, over the time period of 52 weeks, that adds up to a ridiculous amount. And I think truthfully, most people stop three sets, three reps short of the now moment starting. Yeah, and there's also the uh, secondary thing that those uh, pivotal reps do to you. You know, when you, you know, you let's say you're, you know, say you're doing your, your hack squat or whatever, and you get that slow rep, that, yeah. that's that one that's like, oh fuck, that one was a grinder. If you get the next rep, it doesn't just it doesn't just add uh, a, a very difficult amount of stress to your muscle. That's obviously the reason you do it. Right. But it also hardens you mentally. Oh, for sure. Like when you go in for a rep that you're not really sure if you can get and you get it, it builds your confidence. Yeah. And I just I think about all the reps that I did that on. And I'm so thankful I did that on all those reps. Because the people that quit and don't try that next rep, like who cares if you get stuck? I ditched a squat bar yesterday. <laughs> I didn't tell you about this. I ditched a fucking squat bar over my head. I failed and ditched it over my head on the rack. <laughs> my training partner did, like was caught by surprise. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I, he knew I had a couple of hard reps left, but you know, we'd done some 
some pretty tough sets at that point. And I went down for one more rep. And you know when you're kind of squatting and you're maybe you're a little on your toes right. and you start to fail, you can kind of lean back and use your butt. But I was like on my heels already and I was right on my quads. You know what I mean? It's not getting this. Yeah, there was no form. There was no area for me to break my form too, you know, and I was I was right on my heels. I remember feeling like, oh, this is going to be all quads this rep. And I went down for it. And when I drove, I remember they both just shut off. I think a light switch. <laughs> both quads, both quads just poof, were done. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden it was just glutes, hams, and I'm already on my heels. Yeah. And I just fucking, <laughs> yeah. And he went to spot me, but it was like too late. I just fucking fell forward and ditched it on the rack. And a couple of people in the gym were like, you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. Actually, I'm super like hyped that I just ditched the squat bar. <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> it's been so long since I did that. It was like, it was like fun, you know, uh, it just squatting to actual failure. Right. And, and, and then he just looked at me cause he had just smashed a set. Right. Right, like a really good set where he grinded out like a bunch of tough ones you past wanna, failure. You bastard! And and he and I was like, oh shit, fuck! My training partner is fucking putting me in the tank here. And then I bailed a squat bar, and he was like, well, you get set of the day, I guess. Like, <laughs> it was see, pretty that's funny. What, that's what people miss, though. I think I don't know if you saw, but a few months ago, I put up a video where I missed on a hack squat. Uh, I mean, I got I got all the way yeah. up end. I had to ninja my way out of it. And, and it was funny because a guy was like, somebody commented, a few people actually, but they were like, I can't believe you missed. And I'm like, oh, I miss all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like if, if I never miss, then that means I never went for it. Like, yeah. you know, and you're not going to get hurt. You yeah, know? no. You know, it's funny because when we were doing our warm-up sets, I sort of looked and I was like, I better put these stoppers up a little bit. They look a little <laughs> low. And I know like the tough guy thing is to squat without the stoppers, but – you know, after what I've been through, I'm like, I want to put these stoppers up like at the right height, you know, right. and sure as shit, I fucking bailed on it. And it's been a while, but that didn't scare me. It actually made me more confident. I'm like, oh, like there's nothing to fear. Yeah. Like, so what? You go down, you can't come back up. Big fucking deal. You just like lean forward and you're yeah. you're fine. As long as you know what to do when you're pinned, you're fine. And yeah. Yeah. And I think the big issue, too, though, is a lot of people panic or do something stupid trying to get the rep when it's like, no, you're, you're done. It's it's not going. You know what I mean? Just get out, bail. You know, I, I grip so wide on uh, squats that I actually have I have to throw it back. So, right. as you know, that means jump forward so it doesn't hit you in the ass on the way down. Yeah. That's it. I mean, it's like bail and jump. <laughs> yeah, it's chest up, hips forward. Yep. Get your well, and with your me, I mean, my ass is like ten feet long, so I gotta really throw that shit. Forward. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know that the, you know you build that confidence, and you, it takes away the fear of, you know, getting stuck, getting stuck on things, which is a, I think you know something that a lot of people have a problem with. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you can't you, you can't be afraid of those moments because the ones that you make it out of those are the ones that like build your confidence. You're like, fuck, I fucking, you know, I don't have to worry about that weight anymore. Like that weight's nothing, you know? Or if you make a mistake, I mean, I know for me, there's been moments where I've missed a rep. And like you mentioned, I knew I let myself fall a little forward or something. So in my head, it was supposed to be 13 reps or whatever. And I know I actually have 13. I just fucked up. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll put that in my book. Like I got 12, but that's because I was an idiot. Not, yeah, can't get 13, you know? Yeah, yeah. We're not always perfect on every rep. What uh, I got one more related to Jordan here, um, which again, like, uh, you know, I'm not really naming the people here because these were multiple people asked these. Um, so there was a couple that sort of boiled down to how many days a week can you train and still make gains training the way you do? Um, so here's the deal. Uh, I'm a pretty huge uh I worry about the CNS. Um, so I really don't think you can train at that level of intensity more than two to three days before you need a day off. Um, so my days move. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I train quads on Sunday. Uh, it moves all over the place. It depends. Um, and I, I also pay attention to how I feel. Like I might be scheduled to train tomorrow and not going to. Um, right. you know, so you've got to pay attention because – when training is what you love more than anything, 
if you don't want to go, you know that you're smoked. You know, because I want to train every day. If I could train seven days a week, three times a day, I would. Um, so I have to listen to that, which is if I'm not amped to go to the gym, that either means I need a day off or I need a week off. Yeah. I have never successfully been able to train six days a week ever. I always get sick. Right. Your body breaks. Yeah, I always get sick. My the, the way I train, you know, I've I've tried to follow programs before. You know, I thought, wow, maybe I need a bit more volume here and here. And by the time you're done doing up your your schedule, you got a six day split. Right. Like I've been there before. You know, I get ha- hams in their own day, quads their own day, arms their own day. You know, you got a six day split. Right. And I like two weeks, three weeks in, fucking flu symptoms, or I get a cold, or something like that. So my body's never ever been able to handle that. Again, maybe that, you know, that's probably because of the training intensity that, you know, I was trying to take to the workouts, but four to five days, that's absolutely all I can ever handle. And, um, now I just do a two on one off and it seems to be like foolproof. I think that's the big thing too, though, is in nothing is absolute. Uh, there's plenty of guys that train twice a day and have great physiques, um, right. and train hard. But I think if you can consistently train six or seven days a week, at least a couple of those days aren't that hard. Right. So I put as much emphasis and effort into arms as I do into back. Yeah. You know, so it might not be as taxing for my body, but I'm smoked. There's, there's nothing yeah, yeah. left. The brain is smoked. So I really find, like I said, I mean, after the third day of going, like I just trained uh, three days. No, wait. I just trained three days straight. There's no way. Like tomorrow, when I finished this workout before we came in, I was like, oh. I'm done. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And uh, I also, um, I have to do this all the time, but I always tell clients, like, they'll say, oh, it's my day off today. So I just went to the gym and did, did abs and calves. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I get it. But can you try to take a day off weights? Like, right. you could still, obviously, you're getting ready for a show. So still, like, got to do your cardio and all that. But can you not train? Like, don't lift anything. Like, we're trying to, rest your entire system as well right you know because i mean like what calves isn't easy for me it's a lot of pain involved yeah you know it's a half an hour of of pain and stretching and focus and it's also you're trying to rest your mind from the actual task of training right because you come back the next day like you know um so i'm a big believer in days off of training like you still obviously you got your cardio, do your stretching, do your preventative. You know, if you got a massage appointment that day or you're going to, you know, fucking do whatever foam rolling you got to do or whatever. But um, but yeah, I don't lift anything on those days. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that 100 percent. Hard to do because people want. I think that's the big issue is everyone. They feel like, it, as you know, and this is what leads back to overtraining everything. Well, what if I just do more? Yeah, you that's know? it. You know, I, we, we, I've been roped into it repeatedly. Yep. You know what I mean? You just have to remember more is not always better. Um, I always like to just push back to that because, again, and I've done it too, sure as shit, once I get there, I'm like, all right, I'm still 275 pounds, but it's, it's, it looks tired. It right. Looks stringy, you know, versus sometimes the exact same weight, same conditioning, same everything. You look like you're going to explode. Like Yeah. The- I call it like a muscle has pop to it. You take your shirt off. People are like, oh, like, <laughs> how much did you eat today? And you're like 50 grams of carbs for the last three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually, I actually had an interesting, like I was away this week for mutant animation. Right. And, um, uh, oh, I, you'll love this. I, um, I flew into North Carolina. We stayed overnight. The next day we got up, we drove out to Kai Jack's gym to film mutant on a mission. Right. I did a, a, a back workout, back and biceps, uh, with the owner, Matt, great guy. Um, but you know, when I film those episodes, I keep the volume even lower than normal but for the video, yeah. for the video. Like it's just one working set for each exercise. Cause you just got to capture that exercise and move on. Right. And, um, Oh, I got a little bark from Jedi here. So you gotta, you gotta capture that exercise. Right. And, um, so we did, you know, like one all out set of, you know, five different exercises. Right. And that was back. And then for biceps, we did two exercises. So they had like two all-out working sets with a couple four strips on each one. And I was pretty bagged from the flight and everything. And then we left. And um, our flight got canceled. 
So I wound up not getting out that night. We had to stay a second night. Right. But the flight they put us on was at super early in the morning. So, you know, when you look at your watch and you go, okay, I'm going to get four hours of sleep. Right. And then you can't sleep. Yeah. Now I'm just like, right now I get three hours. (laughs) Yeah. And it just kept, plus I had three people competing this weekend. And so I was looking at update. I just, it was just too much going on. I did not sleep for one single minute. Right. Uh, One minute. I did not fall asleep. Got up, went to the airport, flew from uh, Greensboro, North Carolina to Montreal. Unfortunately, the planes we were on were the tiniest little tin cans with the one row down the one side and the two down the other. Yes. Couldn't sleep on either flight. Not a minute. (laughs) So I get to Montreal. I have not, I have not fucking any sleep. Go straight to Atlantis gym. Had to get, had to get my perk on. Right. Camera starts rolling, interview the owner, tour the gym, tour the factory, go fucking train. Pump right. out a chest workout. Um, my buddy Larry and I trained. Uh, we did four working sets for chest and mm-hmm. like three for shoulders. Right. That was it. So two super low volume workouts with zero sleep. Right. And missed meals. Of course. And then when I got home, I looked in the mirror and I'm like, fuck, I look really full. <laughs> and I wonder, I'm like, geez, maybe I, maybe I really needed to dial back on the volume a bit. Right, exactly. Like you just, you, you know what I mean? Not at all. <laughs> you know, I didn't look small and flat from the trip. I actually came back. I looked bigger and harder. Right. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? So you know, it, it sometimes you're reminded that it's not the 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 total number. You know, the total number is not the key. Yeah, for sure. You know? for sure. Um, you you got a few questions there. You could fire a few off. Yeah, I've got a few here. Um, one I already kind of. Uh, hinted with you on so i would like to i'm going to pull them all up so i can get to the fresh ones <sighs> where is it jesus i'm getting too many questions now <clears throat> oh go. and just so everybody knows why you're looking for that um yes we are going to have aceto on the show but yeah. he can't do Mondays. It's a real problem for him. So we have to find an alternate day to record. So the number of people that are asking me when Aceto is going to be on, he is coming. But uh, Monday is his, it's like his daddy day, isn't it? Well, it's, and then 900 businesses, you know. So and, yeah, 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 yeah. Downside and, to that, you know. He's, he's <laughs> like bodybuilding on the weekend, he's got shit to do on Monday. Yeah. All right, here, here was the question that I already kind of threw at you. Um, guy asked, thoughts on MK677? I love all the numbers. Instead of low dose GH due to price, some people say it has the effect of as up to two IUs. Shoot. Uh, I've never, uh, well, actually, you know what? I forgot. I did try MK777. I did try it once. I got really watery off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had a couple clients that have used it and I've had to take them off of it because they were holding a lot of water and I couldn't really see what was going on. Right. Um, so, you know, I've never seen that much water, even from real GH, cause I've obviously used like good stuff and I never had that much water. So it was, for me, it was way more water retention. Mm-hmm. Um, so that part I didn't like. Um, but I mean, there's no replacement for good growth hormone. Like everyone's always trying to cut corners on the GH. I don't know. I, I never, I never, ever, you know, did the real, like the peptide thing for GH. I tried that a little bit. I didn't really think that was nearly as good. Um, some people have good, good responses from that stuff, but you know, if I was competing again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get anything but the best, you know? Yeah. That's that's how I feel. Like I look at these and I think it's a dangerous thing when you start saying, instead of this, I went to the shit version. I mean, that's essentially what you're saying. Well, another thing is in, he's saying, you know, instead of two IUs and I'm like, well, Two IUs, that's like the absolute minimum. Yeah. Like, is that what you're going to take for a show? You're going to take two IUs? I, I think with stuff like that, what, what I, my, my advice is, and I've never done them. I mean, I hate it. Clients will send me these things, and I've never heard of half of them. Right. It's funny because obviously we hang out in the same circles. Neither does anyone else that we, that we know. Yeah. It's I the only one I ever tried. Uh, you know, I don't know a pros, top-level pros that are using any of this shit. So yeah. it's feel like you're kind of getting sold a dream Um, because literally, I mean, I'm not going to name names here, but I mean, you guys know who we hang out with. I don't know anyone who's done all this shit 
Um, so I think that the big factor when you're looking at these is no. Like I'd rather say keep your money, but buy better quality beef or 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 yeah. save it for a year for your next show and buy good growth. Like do, get do the, not get the you gotta get the white tuna. Yeah. <laughs> That's shit. We Comes back to the white tuna. Yeah, you know you're balling. Yeah. Um yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. And not only um the guys that we hang out with haven't used it, but think of the coaches that we know. Yeah. Well, I don't hear I don't hear, don't hear these I, things to me be like what? <laughs> I don't hear them talking about them. No. Um now the only thing that I will say that I've actually like I do have something good to say about SARMs. Um I've had a couple of female clients that wanted to use Austrian. Right. They found that they were able to get a great result. In fact, they got in the best shape of their life ever working with me that year. Like one person I'd never worked with before and she started to work with me and she really wanted to try Austrian, so we th threw it in. She wound up getting in the best shape she'd ever been in and on the least amount of drugs she's ever taken for a show. Right. So the Austrian definitely covered some ground there because I think she was used to taking like, you know, quite a bit of Anivar and some Primo and, you know, this and a little bit of that. And all she wound up taking like was 20 Anivar in the Austrian and that was it. Right. And she was like bigger and harder than ever. So the Austrian definitely helped. Right. The other, the other thing I have to say about SARMs is um, if you're using SARMs, that's fine. I have nothing against using them. I think they're going to be an awesome class of drugs, especially once we get into like the third, fourth generations of them when they really get them down pat and they really work well. Right. But you're not natty. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that. You're I'm just, you're not, you're not natural. You're now a PED user. You're on drugs, just like the rest of us. Sure. It's fine. Like it's totally cool, but just, you're not natty. That's like when guys are taking the pro hormones. I'm like, they're designer steroids. Are you kidding me? Yeah, they're designer steroids. Yeah. So, but it's just those are just the facts. That's you know, I'm a, I'm an old school guy. PEDs are PEDs, you know. Um, but you're just you're not natty any, anymore, you know. Yeah. N nice to try on that one. All right, I got I got a few too. Um, oh, I don't. I hate when asking those kind of questions. Ooh, best tips for traveling during prep. Oh shit. Well. In 2015, the year I got my pro card, I did a 20-week prep, and I spent seven entire weeks on the road. I remember. <laughs> I <ran> yeah. Because <laughs> I started my prep in January, and I had to go to the Arnold and then fly directly to the Arnold Australia. Yep. And then I went to Body Power, and then I went to FIBO. Oh. <laughs> and then we did, like, a shoot that I had to travel for and some mutant on emissions. And then I competed. And when I added it up, it was seven full weeks of travel inside a 20-week prep. And I vacuum sealed and froze all my meals and put them in a hard shell cooler mm -hmm. and zip tied it and wrote my name on it in big marker and <laughs> checked it as a second bag. Right. And then just crossed my fingers everywhere that customs wouldn't like take it away. Right. Um, the only country I didn't bother taking food to was Australia because I actually had a hook up there to get my meals made. Right. Um, because Australia allows zero food. Like you can't import anything at all, like fucking nothing. So I knew that ahead of time. Um, and that was 2015, which was kind of funny to think about it because there were hardly any meal prep companies. Like the meal prep companies have exploded right. since then. For so sure. like now, I mean, if I was going to do that again, I'd just like, I, you know, I just arrange my meals to magically appear at the hotel for me. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, everyone's got it so easy now, you know, can I have 10 ounces of chicken and a cup of rice times 30, you right. know? <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, back, back then, which, you know, wasn't too long ago, I was a vacuum sealing and taking my food. So the bottom line is it's your responsibility to make sure you have what you need. And if you think you're going to need it, you fucking take it, you know, and I always had, you know, I remember I used to always travel. I'd have a couple cans of tuna and a can opener and some servings of protein and some rice cakes and stuff that you can eat without a kitchen, you know, on hand, just in case it's, it's, you just have to take responsibility. 
I mean, it's, it's all about, like you said, it's responsibility and preparation, knowing what you need. Um, the, the big thing is how to keep this stuff cl from going bad, which you already nailed. It's, it's got to be frozen. Uh, like for me, when I do the, like the, like the, the long flights, um, a lot of guys will say, well, how do you carry it on board? You can't have ice. It's like, well, the food that I'm not eating today is frozen. Yes. So it is now my ice. Yes. That I'm eating today. See, I always had a fear. And granted, I didn't have like typical week long trips of my food getting lost on the flight. So I would actually bring one of the bigger coolers on the airplane with me as my carry on. And I'd have all my vacuum sealed stuff in there frozen and then the food for the flight on top of it. So it was cold. And that yeah. way off my side, you know, even even in my little my little cooler that I take on the plane, let's say I have three meals in there. Uh, one or two of them will be frozen. Yep. And they'll act as my ice pack. And then after I eat the first meal, I can, if I need to, I can put ice in that container and, right. and you know, click it back shut. And that could be my ice pack. Right. Um, like I've been on those long flights where I've asked the flight attendant, can you fill this with ice just to make sure I keep my other meals cold? Right. Um, so, yeah, you just do what you got to do. And another thing I learned that year was, holy fuck, those hard shell coolers, they really work. Because I had food. I had food that I froze uh, and threw a couple ice packs in. It was full. Shipped it, got all the way to Germany, got it back to my hotel, opened my cooler. Everything was still frozen, completely solid. Right. I was just blown away with how good that cooler worked. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about stuff going bad. And I didn't even need a fridge in my room because I just kept dumping ice in the cooler. Yep. <laughs> and I'd come back to my room at night. It would still be all frozen. You know, yeah. I'd just take the meals out. With the uh, If you're taking a bunch of food – Typically, the hotel, if you have the small refrigerator, you go downstairs and they have any form of a kitchen, they will actually house your food for you. Yeah, the, the one like place in, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one hotel in Germany got to know me. I just walk right into the kitchen and go in the cooler and get my meals. Yeah, they knew. They're like, he goes this six times a day. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, they were, they, were, they were cool about it. Yeah, you got another one there? I got a ton. I gave them 20 minutes warning, so we're good here. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid to post about today's show because I already had so many. <laughs> All right, here's a good one. How long did you train naturally before you hopped on gear? Uh, four years. Okay. Because I, I told on the last episode, I did my first cycle of D-ball when I was 18. Right. Uh, but I started training when I was like just turned 14. So, you know, I started training at 138 and I didn't start taking gear till I was like 220. Four, so I can't remember, 225 or something like that. Right. So, you know, I almost put on 100 pounds naturally. Right. <laughs> so, what do you, um, what, here's a, I'm going to twist that question a little further because I think it's key is how do you explain to guys that they, that it's not about how long you train naturally, but yeah. what do they need to do before it's, before they should consider? jumping on something because I mean I, I'm blown away guys come in they don't even know if you ask them what their training split is they look at you get, you got six heads and then they'll say what do you think about sipinate and, and propanate as a combo yeah. oh fuck we also know nothing about that I think that I, you're right time isn't really the major factor it's what have you done with your time right so um, one thing that I really don't like seeing is I don't like guys seeing hop on juice when they're not strong at all. Right. Like you should be strong. Like, and I don't mean strong, like impressing people strong, but strong for you. Like if you're a small framed guy and you're really tiny, then strong for you might be benching a plate and a half. Right. Like, you know, it's not, it's not a four, four plate bench for everybody. You know, some people have, you know, they're genetically really strong for them is like, you know, different. Um, and then other guys, obviously you get those big farm kids, like I used to play football against. And it's like, you know, some of those guys can bench easy for plate naturally, Yeah. you know? Um, so it, you, but you should be strong. You should have tested your natural limits of strength, uh, at least somewhat, you know, you should have, you know, a, a strong squat and a, you should be deadlifting heavy and, you know, whatever that is for your size. But but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I benched, uh, you know, 300 and squatted 405 in high school. And, um, you know, that's, I know that, you know, that's not common, but you know, whatever that, is, whatever that means, you should, you should have some strength. If you're, if you're fooling around with one plate benches and stuff, like you're not ready for gear. Right. I also think if you're not, if you're not like, if you have no idea what you're eating yet, 
It's yeah, well, not, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I find a lot of that too where, you know, when I used to own the stores, people would come in and they'd have tons of questions about gear or pro hormones or whatever at the time. And you'd answer them all. And then I'd finally jump in and be like, what'd you eat today? And then they'd tell you and you're like, yeah, yeah. You're focus, you're, you're, you're focused on, on the most advanced things and you don't have a foundation yet. You know, it's like, and like you said before, it doesn't have to be the six ounces of this, but are you eating every three or so hours of some protein and carbs and some fats? Yeah. Great. If you're doing that, I guess we're on our way. I, I had a, I had something I, I said to someone once and they, they said it really got the message home to them. I said, you know, if someone's been skiing for three months and you give them a pair of like $5,000 skis, mm-hmm. Are they going to be any better at skiing? Yeah, no. They're just going to be a clumsy beginner on five thousand dollars skis. It's they're not even going to notice that their skis are better. Yeah, no, for like, sure. They don't even notice a, a difference. They don't even know that they're on five thousand dollars skis. They're still falling down all over the place and doing the bunny hill and snow plowing and shit. Um, is this too Canadian for you, Dusty? No, actually, I mean, remember uh, who I am. <laughs> hockey, my whole, I'm <laughs> in my head because I remember uh, when Nike came into hockey yeah yeah and, and kids would show up with like nike skates i'm like i'm fighting him right i'm <laughs> fighting him I'm like i'm kicking his ass today <laughs> I, why the fuck would you wear nike skates like, that's, that's mom, you know because it's and it's funny but if you look and this is a segue thing but i used to laugh because kids were so fancy with the perfect socks and all their like matching gear oh the, that was when it changed players. The really good players had like I had sweatpants that I pulled over my shin pads, and used uh, old hockey skate uh, laces and tied them instead of tape because I didn't want to waste the fucking tape. I look like and, I got a mess out there. And you had leather bowers from the swap meet. Yeah, I mean it was just like so when you see that stuff, it's kind of the same thing. I'm like, oh, that's fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. So, so yeah, I just said you know, but if you took someone who's skiing, you know, for ten years and you give them better skis. They, they step up. Yeah, it's a game changer for sure. Game changer for them. So, you know, you could do the same analogy with, with, with anything, but that's sort of what it's like to me, you know? Yeah, um, sure. There's, there's not ready. It's not going to make a real difference. What I think that, you know, what I've always said about the, the gear is, if not, like we discussed last week or two weeks ago, it hides mistakes. You know, if you can't see measurable change uh, on your training and diet plan, then you're, then you're, it's wrong. I mean, right. I, even at this, at this stage, when I have a new client come to me, who's been on and stuff, they might be on right now. I'm like, how long have you been on? Okay, go off. <laughs> and now <laughs> I'm going to build you a plan and I'm going to make you grow without, because yeah. I don't know what that shit does, but I need to know that I'm making you grow without, when I say without, I mean, it might be 200 milligrams for a guy that's been on for forever, but he's going to be real low. And we're going to be relying on the food and the training. And once I'm seeing measurable change, I'm like, okay, Let's do this. Yeah. And I, I say to clients too, you know, I have clients who call me and they're like, you know, like, well, like, well, like I've got this one really great young guy. I'm helping him. And I see so much potential in him. And, you know, he messaged me. He's like, he's like, I lost a rep on my chest exercises. And I'm like, that's fine. Like you're off. You're not on anything at all. Right. And you're, you're, you're he's coming off the post show rebound. Right. So, <laughs> you know, this, the strength goes stupid and then it kind of yeah. like, it draw like you know what I mean I'm like that's fine don't worry about it you can get even if you get weaker for a few weeks I'm not even remotely worried because yeah. it's it's where we're going and where you're going to be next time you compete that I care about yeah it's and and you know peaks and valleys it's not linear so you know uh it, sometimes uh, the young guys are like oh my god I'm getting weaker right now I'm like I got weaker a million times yeah. like you're gonna get stronger too you know just wait your strength's gonna go through the roof next time we do a blast and and you're you get your food up and you know, right now you're just trying not to get too fat. <laughs> what I used to always say is with the peaks and valleys analogy is as long as your current valley is higher than your last valley, you're fine. Right. As long as your next peak is higher than your previous peak, we're heading up. Yes. Way. You know what I mean? And I yeah, think yeah. people get screwed up is all they think is my valley is lower than my peak. It's like, well, yeah, that's how this works. Yeah. Very, very normal. You know, you um, got step back to take two steps forward okay i got a good one here for you dusty fire um 
What podcast do we listen to? Chat. You guys are about to find out I'm the worst bodybuilder in the world. I listen to Joe Rogan's podcast and that's it. Right. <laughs> Just Rogan. Yeah, because, I mean, and, and what I love about Rogan is I'm doing like 20 minutes of cardio a day right now. So one episode is like more than a week of cardio. <laughs> so you have no shortage of material. Yeah, I mean, literally, like, so So that's what I do. But the reason is um, actual bodybuilding podcasts, I, I think I could definitely get behind starting to watch Fuad and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Luke's uh, bodybuilding bollocks because – it's not so bodybuilding. Um, you know, I've been immersed in bodybuilding for so long. And not to say that there's nothing to learn, but I learn it talking to my friends, not listening to podcasts. You know what I mean? Right. right. Uh, so, so I get more value out of the world events and views and things like that from something like a Rogan um, or the humor of something like, uh, you know, pure entertainment of, of listening to Fuad and Luke's uh show but yeah other than that i really don't um you know i guess i don't consume as much content as i create right and that's i'm sort of in the same boat so i listen to fuad's real bodybuilding podcast i, I don't catch every episode mm -hmm. um he's awesome at churning out material but one thing i will say about fuad's show is i really like fuad's content because mm -hmm. i like fuad he's a great guy we've always gotten along um but I, I so, sorry. What's you're an asshole. So assholes like assholes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like so, him too. Makes sense. So uh, I, I like listening to him. Um, I think he asks interesting questions. I like how he, you know, gets his guests to open up and joke around. Like it's a it's a good show. You know, it's a I like it. And then the the show with Luke is hilarious. I've I've heard several episodes of that. Um, and, and then occasionally I'll put on heavy muscle radio. Mm -hmm. Um. Usually, if Chris texts me and says, "That's what I do." If Chris says, "Did you listen?" To that? I'm like, "If Chris texts me, goes, what did you think? You have to listen to Heavy Muscle." <laughs> then I'm like, "Okay, he probably either mentioned a text I sent him, or he tells a funny story or something." So, um, so I'll listen to Heavy Muscle. Sometimes that's pretty entertaining. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I just don't have a lot of time for podcasts, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but my main podcast consumption is Joe Rogan. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. But everyone that's listening right now is nodding. And some weeks it's more than others. You know, there might be an episode with someone like, I'm, you know, he had Rob Zombie on right. just a little while ago. And I was like, oh, fuck, that's going to be awesome. I listened to the whole episode. Like I made breakfast, ate a meal, worked on a laptop, listened to the whole thing all at once. Right. Um, but sometimes you get a week where there's like people you don't really know. Yeah. And like, ah, you kind of wondering like, oh, this guy's a physicist and this guy's, a, you know, yeah, like, you know, politician and this guy's that, and you maybe pick one based on that and listen to it, mm -hmm. um, and you get the odd surprise. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and then he has the odd episode that's just like a beautiful, glorious, flaming train wreck. Um, <laughs> like he had like Roseanne Barr on again. Yeah, I saw. I I haven't watched that one yet, but she's I like your your friend's crazy fucking mom. <laughs> so you know. Too. Just yeah, that. When I saw that. I literally like it was like a mental check. Like, don't forget to watch that one. Because <laughs> she was on not long ago, like right after she lost her show. Yeah, for being a fucked up crazy mom. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, I was tweeting on Ambien. I don't know what I was fucking saying, you know. And she was just funny. But then this episode, she's she's even a little bit more like, woo, like <laughs> I'm on Ambien now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She she you know, it, it, but yeah, I, I really like that show. I mean, Joe is great. He's a lot of fun. Um. And then, you know, I always watch his uh, highlights of the week, you know, kind of sum up the best moments of the week. Well, you could do it's funny, but I, and I put that in your in your birthday post today. You could do a show like Joe because you have so much information in your dome that I don't <laughs> where the fuck you come, like, when I hang out with Ron and we have conversations. It's like a reminder that I'm not that smart. I'm like, <laughs> how do you know this shit? And so. Like, it's not like you're talking like you've got this like you're one of those people that knows everything. It's like I'm listening. I'm like, did you memorize the article? Why uh, were you reading that article? What? What? How many hours are in your day? You're a busy fucking man. Like, no, I. So I have like barely any real skills in life, Dusty. <laughs> like, but one of the things that I just accidentally am good at is I just remember if something interests me, I just remember it. So if I read a random fact. Like, 
It could be anything, but it, for some reason is interesting to me. I'll remember it for years and years and years. We had a conversation at yeah. dinner, and I'm always like, how do you know that? And I, like, sometimes I want to Google it. I'm like, that motherfucker had that date down and everything. Like, shit. Yeah, yeah. page 57 of the National Enquirer, June 2006. <laughs> why do you know what page it was on? I yeah, the, I, the, I, I surprised myself with the odd thing. And then also, too, Dusty, even if you're not sure of the page number, just be confident in the page number, and the story's better. It deliver it so strongly that I'm like, it has to be 37. He fucking said it is. <laughs> right, right. That's part of it. That's part of it. <laughs> no, but I seriously, look, like, it would be great if there was a way to get you a bodybuilding slash world event show because I, then all of a sudden I would have something to watch because I'm like, every time we go out, I'm like, I'm really hoping Ron has a good story tonight. <laughs> well, I hope I don't let you down, Dusty. I, I try to eat with stories with Ron. You will lose. I try to keep up. Immediately. <laughs> I, uh, I emceed a show on the weekend. Yeah, I saw that. How'd the, they go? The Van City, the West Coast Iron Van City Showdown. Ooh, your first, we're the, first title sponsor? Yeah, we're first title sponsor. It's our second year doing the show. Um, uh, you know, I, I'd like to take credit for being a promoter, but uh, really it's uh, our, our team, the team that really promotes the show. Uh, Corey, Corey that 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 runs the uh, the main promotion is, is does a lot of the work. But I, I definitely show up with the suit on and uh, – it was a nice time to see the show. Well, you know, you had to get some suits made. I was out of jackets. I can't, you know, start showing up in pictures wearing the same shit. I was, I was um, like, ooh, I haven't seen this one. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I got two new seat, suits made. Wait till you see the next one. The next suit I got, that's going to, you know, I went a little bit like, let's get funky a little bit. Well, you have to because you've got, what, what's, the, what's the other MC that's always up there that's got the crazy? Oh, Kim. Suit? Yeah, oh. MC. Yeah, that guy. He's got the, the flashy. Where did you buy this fucking thing? Yeah, yeah, he's he's good. Um, so, anyways, I was emceeing, and uh, and you know, I'm just a just a dumb English dude, right? I do the best I can. And this one, well, there was a lot of dudes in the show that had hard names, right? Like there was, I don't, and I'm not sure. I don't want to like offend them and call them the wrong thing, but I'm not sure if they're Persian names or Arab names or or East Indian names. Some of them, like it was a mix. There's all these different names, right? Right. And. Uh, and when I first got the name sheet, because I was, you always want the name sheet early, because you're going to see those names. Yeah, then you grab them and ask them. And you want to, or there's some, maybe some, just all types of names, or there's a Russian name or a name with X's in it. You know, yeah. you, you want to find the athletes to be like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like to butcher people's names, right? I was fucking hated it when people would say Ron Paltrow. Girl, where's the L? Though they thought I was like Gwyneth Paltrow. Right. Well, you- it's just the T and the L are just switched, right? Probably not your type, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I always hated it. So I'm like, part low, part low. Fuck, there's an R in there. Like, drive me crazy. Um, so anyways, uh, you know, you, but what, once the show started, boom, I just fucking did the best I could. Nailed them, nailed them, nailed them. Got, I think I did really good. And then afterwards, I got messages from two people. They're like, man, you did awesome with some of those names. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I was like, cool, I, I'm glad I want to get the names right. You know, I, I don't because I don't want, you know, I know what it's like. Well, I don't know what it's like to really get your name butchered. But, you know, be an athlete on the side of the stage and you hear your name announced and you're like, oh, fuck, you know, <laughs> I would never want to do that to anybody. So I did the best I could. And uh, I got you know, it was pretty funny. And I said to the one guy, I go, you know, the key is to just deliver the name. Yeah, go just com- just go confident, because if you go up like a like a woman. You know, it's a question. Like if you if you say the name and you go da 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 da, it's like I think, <laughs> yeah. right? You just got to deliver. <laughs> it's gold. So, gold. Okay, All right, you got well, another yeah. one there, bro. A few more here, so I want to grab them up here. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is good. Uh, PJ Morrison wants to know thoughts on TRT for men in their twenties, and he put in parentheses. Joe Donnelly has been huge on this recently. Um, well, the way I, mean, I want to get Joe on the show eventually. I don't know how many people know Joe Donnelly, but I want to, he lives right down the road here. I want to convince him we could have a lot of fun. It could be a complete train wreck. I, think I don't awesome. know what would happen. That's why it would be fun. Like, I don't know how to describe that Joe one, to people. That one live with Collins. Oh, fuck. I, I honestly, I don't know how to describe Joe. Joe's like the nicest, coolest guy. And I think he's also like, 
the most abrasive asshole <laughs> in the world. But he's my buddy because I like get along with him totally fine. Like, it, but I just love I love how he's just so ruthless. I love that video he put up where he was training that dude the other day. Uh, I didn't see it, so tell me. Oh my god! So he had this kid. I guess the guy's lost over a hundred pounds. Right. And then you watch Joe train him, and you're like, oh no doubt, uh, no doubt, he's lost a hundred pounds. Lost hundred pounds this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe's got him out behind the gym running sprints, and he's fucking screaming at him, just saying. He goes, the kid's bent over breathing, and he's like, are you fucking done? You might as well vote for Hillary and take some dick up your ass and fucking become a Democrat, you fucking <laughs> pussy. You waste half your life being a lazy fat fuck. You fucking run. You fucking run. And he's <laughs> screaming at the kid, and the kid just fucking keeps running, keeps running. And he's like, that's right. You fucking run. He just fucking all over him. And I guess Instagram, I guess, like, took it, like, like, thought it was so bad that like, someone reported it. He took it down. Yeah, it's uh, so fucking funny. <laughs> but that's how Joe is. That's just how he is, you know. I, and I, and he's always talking about, I pack my fucking gun anywhere. You know, some guy said to him, uh, do you carry in the gym? He's like, yeah, my Glock's in my bag. He's like, <laughs> you know, because you're, you're in Arizona, right? I so. <laughs> <laughs> he's just fucking hilarious. Um you know, but yeah, I'd, I'd have Joe on the show for sure. That would be fun. Oh, yeah. No, we definitely will. So so what do you think about the TRT for guys in their 20s, though? Well, I mean, I think Joe, you know, he's wants to he's saying to guys, hey, get your levels. You know, let's say normal is, you know, whatever, whatever metric you're using. Let's just say normal's 30 to 130. Right. And you're at like 94. Right. Joe's saying that's cool but if you want to be a, like a sexual fucking machine prowler predator predator, predator and an absolute dis, you know iron destroyer and you want to squat 500 for reps then why don't you go to 130 right get uh, it up there you know what's funny is uh and and this is a little bit uh off topic for the question but the people who i use for uh for my uh hormone replacement um the reason he got started in it was exactly that. This is, you know, before it was in vogue and everyone was doing it. He went, he was a race car driver, business owner, super successful, and he started getting older. And in his late 30s, started to feel the drop. Yeah. And he went to the doctor, and the doctor was like, well, you're getting older. That's it. Yeah, it's normal. You know, and he was like, well, fuck that. If this is what I should expect as a downward fall for the rest of my life, I don't want to be here. Yeah. So he's a race car driver. So what does he do? He starts delving into hormones and how to manipulate and what you can do. And first he was attending seminars, then he was putting them on. Right. You know, because he would go and he would start debating with these doctors and things. And they're like, oh, I never thought of that. And wait, what about, you know what I mean? And so the point is, is I am, I'm actually 100% with Joe. It's like, in my opinion, I hate if you go to your general doctor. Yep. And you say, I'm exhausted. I have no sex drive. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to do anything. And they take your blood work. And he's like, oh, you're tested 500. You're fine. No, but I just gave you 70. Set, like, I'm not talking about a dude who wants to work out. I'm talking about an average guy. They will tell you, you don't need anything. You are within range. Yes. Yes. Plus range. If I feel like shit, I feel like shit. Yeah. So to me, get to the top end of range. Also, don't forget there's 10,000 other hormones you should make sure they're in place. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you get tested and see where you are. Another yeah. another benefit that nobody brings up anymore. It used to be something that people talked about. No one mentions it at all anymore. But I can personally attest to its effectiveness is that testosterone's a hell of a good birth control. <laughs> <laughs> like, believe you me, I should have got somebody pregnant by now. <laughs> But I haven't, and you know I'm pretty happy with the effectiveness of uh, of the uh, the fact that test is like a you know it is a birth control. I don't uh, North America doesn't prescribe it for that, but I know in Europe for a long time they were doing like like TRT doses of test as like birth control for men, and they had really good uh, really good uh, percentages that that they were coming back with and all that. So yeah, that's something to think about too. You know, a little side benefit. A little side benefit, and, and I could definitely say that. Uh, Anyone who's been in that road, I know I've had that conversation before. Like, I'm late. I'm like, well, it wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me. <laughs> I know. And then everyone also everyone also has that one friend 
that yeah. that does not apply to. Yeah, exactly. Somehow it happened. You're like, I didn't say it's a hundred percent, but yeah, ninety six. <laughs> no, I know. I got a buddy who uh, who who has both his kids were contest prep babies. <laughs> I didn't tell you to stop pulling out. I just said that the odds were better. Yeah, yeah, you should. Yeah, you still should be pulling out. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's gold. Oh, God. All right. Do we got time for a couple more? Or what? Yep, yep. Uh, okay. Um, this is interesting. So I'm going to have you generalize a little bit here, but uh, Howie underscore K wants to know coach prices and level of athletes they coach in competitive bodybuilding, not lifestyle. So what do you charge to prep bodybuilders? Yeah, that's interesting. I've done it differently over the years. Um, it just de depends. If someone wants to pay like ahead of time, like all at once, mm -hmm. you know, they just want to pay and like, like, hey, man, show six months away. I just want to pay you. Then, uh, you know, I will, you know, work something a little bit better out. But uh, normally my rate's 350 a month. Mm -hmm. um hey, i do like 150 bucks guys yeah canadian so it's like 50 bucks american it's like cheap <laughs> it's like practically free um i charge 350 a month canadian uh and you know i get good response with that the people that prep with me have absolutely no problem paying that uh some of them have even said it's they're like oh that's that's good my last coach charged they'll name some guy that has done nothing i've never heard of and he's like 500 bucks a month i'm like holy shit Right. You know, so he's never competed like right. some of the people that are just milking these people. Um, it, you know, it, it uh, it's so funny how it works. You know, you can have a shitty coach who gets his hand on a really genetically gifted guy. Right. And the next thing you know, that shitty coach is like the hottest guy on the block. Right. Because he's got his hands on this fucking talented monster who just like you know, responded really, really well. So one of the things I always say is, you know, how do their natty guys look mm -hmm. on average? Right. right. I've had probably, I don't know, six or eight people win natty pro cards over the years. And I only prep like, like if I get like one natty a year. So it also look at that. Like if someone, they say, oh, this guy produces, say, this guy gets all the bikini pro cards. I'm like, well, he better. He's got 100 bikini girls. Right. <laughs> it's, it becomes mathematical. That it just becomes math. Like if he has 10 bikini girls in every show, he should bring home bikini pro cards. Like that's the numbers are just too crazy. Or about 30 people in one show. Right. I, I look at the coaches that put in the real like focus work is what I always looked for in a coach. You know, how many times has your coach gone to a show with one guy? And brought home all the fucking hardware. Right. Yeah. I've done that. I've done that uh, like two dozen times. Right. Yeah. Gone to a show with one dude. Class overall. Let's go. Yeah. And no, I've had that before where uh, when I was training more people locally, um, it was funny because there was moments when I was coaching people and so was my old coach, JJ Marsh. Mm -hmm. And someone would walk out just sliced. And someone would look at me and be like, you? And I'm like, that's your guy? got to be Jay. Cause if it's not me, then it has to be him. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I, I, I had people uh, start to say like back when I lived in Alberta and I would prep a lot of local people. Mm -hmm. I, I remember people like they'd look at me and they'd be like, they'd point at the one, be, he's yours. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and they, they'd say they could tell by the posing. Right. And like back when guys used to have to do their own tan, remember those days? Yeah. 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 They could say, oh, your guys always have good tan. And I, cause I was so paranoid about color cause I'm so white. Yeah. I would do it for them. Yeah. Like I would say, man, you got to put on like five bottles of pro tan and then, and then we'll, you know, then we'll do an overcoat, you know, like, yeah. and they would come out like with really good color and, and, and all that stuff. So people used to be able to say they could pick my guys out of the line. There's a lot of great coaches out there too. There's also coaches that are repeatedly really good at helping people and get almost, they're not like well known at all, you know. Well, I think I, a lot of people have this misconstrued thing of that because you know the guys who are pushing to be gurus and to be yeah. out there, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and some of them are great coaches, some of them are not. Um, but there are countless people that I respect and talk to um, that that churn people out, and no one knows because they just do it quietly. You know, like yeah. I never. 
I don't actually promote my coaching currently. Um, like people know, but like I've now I'm like, oh, maybe I should make one of those uh, cards that says I do coaching and put it up in my stories every now and then. Um, but people just they see it, and I don't even like hammer on putting a bunch of my clients up because um, I do tell my clients I'll post about you if you're interested, or I'll share your stuff. But I don't assume that that I get to do that just because I work with them. Yes. You know, so if they, you know, it's all time. If you want me to put you out there, I will. Um, but I'm not going to just do it because I think sometimes it's like, it kind of comes off as look what I did. Um, and I don't necessarily, you know, yes, you played your role. Um, but you know, the majority of clients, they do, they're proud and they, they want to. So they'll say, absolutely. Or if they tag me in a, in a uh, story, yeah. line, I'll share that. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I know exactly what you mean. So I know that there's people. L- let me hear your opinion on this. I know there's these new, the new era of, of coaches, where you sign on with them and you actually sign a contract, right? Like bit. that yeah, doesn't mean anything. You have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unenforceable, anyways. Yeah. Um. So they sign. You sign a bullshit contract, and then, and then, um, you have to tag them. You have to put coached by in your IG bio. Mm-hmm. And you have to repost their branded coaching ads, right? (laughs) And then when you go to the show, you have to wear their coaching team jacket or shirt or whatever. Right. I, that is so beyond anything that I would comprehend. I, I always used to say, I understand, I understand business. Right. I'm just not that good at it. (laughs) <laughs> right. I understand business. It's just not my thing. I always used to say, you're not on my team. I'm on your team. Right. Yeah. Like I should, I should have a team Johnny shirt on. Right. If I'm helping. If I'm helping Johnny, I should have a right. team Johnny shirt on. I'm Johnny's coach. This is Johnny's team. His wife is on the team. I'm on the team. His best friend and training partner are on the team. Right. Yeah, this I is agree. team Johnny. Yep. This isn't about me. Right. No, I hear you. And I always used to, that used to really bother. It doesn't bother me as much now because I just let things go as I get older. Hence the, hence the birthday. Forty four. <laughs> At forty four, I can't give a fuck about that stuff anymore. I understand, and some of these guys are doing fucking awesome. They have like a hundred clients paying them two hundred fifty dollars a month. It's just fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, but I just, I just, yeah. And then the whole advertising your coaching thing. Um, I feel like when I advertise my coaching. I'll get like 10 new clients, but only two of them are really good. Right. And I don't mean really good as in like, they're going to look good on my stories. I mean, good, like they fucking really want to work, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other guys are sort of, they want to dip their toes in and, and see what it's all about. And they're kind of hesitant. No, this is, this is really, I'm not ready for this. And they just turn out to be kind of, you know, those guys that fizzle away really quickly and you can't really help them. Right. And I just get really, really tired of that. You know, I want to, I'll try to help anybody. Um, but uh, I just find if I just don't advertise, then the quality client, those two good guys still come. Right. Not what you mean. No, I definitely know what you mean. So, but yeah, the, the business of it has been difficult for me just because, um, and I don't mean difficult, like hard to do. I just mean difficult, like, uh, I'm not really the big fan of some of this stuff. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I hear you for sure. So I just sort of, uh, you know, I'm I actually, I'm really been happy with what this show has done. Right. Because since we started doing these episodes, the people that have been contacting me have been awesome. Like yeah, it's really, really cool. high quality of, of inquiry. So, I mean, that's, that's all I want right now. Yeah, no, I think, I think this is a good question too, because I do find that some people, um, I'm shocked when they don't jump in because they're so amped and they're like, oh, $250 a month. And I'm like, what did you think it was gonna cost? Right. Like, I mean, I do updates every five days. You can contact me as much as you want. Yeah. Um, you know, cause I, and I've had people ask me, I mean, just recently a great, a great new client of mine, if I pay six months up front, is it less? And I said, no. Right. Right. <laughs> this is my price because I'm very good at what I do. You will be here in six months um, yeah. and, I, and I don't need the money up front. So, right. you know what I mean? Uh, and I, I want to do this. And the reason I like month to month is <clears throat> I like to, to me, the only fear I have, and I know a lot of old school guys, um, you know, it's all up front. Uh, the way I look at it is 
you're hiring me. I have a job to do. When you pay me every month, I got rehired again. Right. Uh, so if I suck or if I fall off or whatever, like w what is your repercussions against the guy who took $4,000 from you and you find he takes four days to respond? Yeah. Nothing. There's nothing you can do. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. to me, and it's a two way street too. If, if you're sucky to work with, I don't really, I don't want the money bad enough to keep working with you if you're not clicking along. So everybody who I work with currently is doing the best they can. I mean, they're perfect. They've got missed check-ins, they've got struggles, they've got plenty of things, but I know they're putting forth the effort, so I'm still in, and that makes it enjoyable beyond the money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you mean. I just had a really good weekend with the clients that, that competed. I was really happy with all, with all three of them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, just all three people worked really hard. They, I could tell they were following the plan because they changed every week. Mm -hmm. Um, the one, the, the one girl that I helped, she didn't have a lot of time. It was a bit of a short prep. She just fucking busted her ass. You know, the one dude I helped, it was a comeback. He'd like competed back in the old days with me, like Oh five, Oh six, Oh seven, I think where you, and then, yeah. you know, he went and had kids and all that stuff. And then he did the whole comeback show and he was absolutely, you know, he was nice and ripped and he, he, I was just super happy. And, uh, and then I helped a natty guy for the show out here. And I mean, he went from like. 235 to 190 right like you know natty and it, it, yeah you know he looked great and everything and uh, he had a really good weekend so i was just really happy with uh with everything so that's the best part and the most rewarding part about coaching you know didn't have any wins this weekend but doesn't didn't bother me at all it was like if the clients are happy and they they did all they could you know that's that's a good that's a good spot absolutely yeah. so dusty yes sir you got one more I think we're pretty solid, man. I mean, pretty the ones solid. that are really good shots. So you know. I, I just I just realized now that we've done like almost an hour and a half. That's how we roll when we got question and answer. I know it kind of flew by. Um, and there's a few more here we can save till next week. So we don't have a guest officially booked for next week, but we got some lines out. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm looking forward to it, though. Absolutely. You know, the feedback's been great. I think people have all kind of migrated over to the channel, obviously. Um, you know, like we were saying, those first couple episodes on the new channel didn't get as many YouTube views, but now it seems to be surpassing easily. So um, really happy to see it growing. And, you know, people keep the keep the questions coming and um, keep the feedback coming and, you know, tell your friends. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, guys. Dusty Hanshaw, myself. Remember, it's just bodybuilding.